listen to Two Married Lesbians discuss an LGBTQ plus book each month that highlights the queer human condition as they use connection and humor to relate the issues to us as a queer community. She's Anna. And she's Miranda. I am. And we're two married lesbians. We are. And we're all queer here. All right. So welcome on back. Very exciting to be talking about a lovely book. Uh, But first, at the top... Wanted to uh, let everybody out there know we have some social media accounts, which is cool and exciting. Most, most definitely. Yes. Hit us up. I'm going to hit you up. So at Facebook, and we're going to make it real easy. At Facebook, it's just all queer here pod. Uh, Instagram and Twitter, both at all queer here pod. Email us, and I wish you would. Because we want to hear from you. We really do. Book suggestions, lovely things, questions for us we could address. On Absolutely. Air. All of which send it right on over allqueerherepod at gmail.com. Oh, I should write that down. Yeah. Do you what want- was that again? It was what? All queer here pod, as in short for podcast. At gmail.com. Got it. I'll send you one. Not right now, really? but la- later. Should I stop the podcast? Well, it's going to be a love note, so. Oh, okay. You're welcome. Are you, can I read it out loud on air next time? We'll see. Let me okay. let me finish the draft. So just keeping it simple. Okay. Also keeping it simple, we had agreed to do one book a month. We did. But there's so many queer books out there. We just can't do them all. We can't. So I was thinking, what if we tried to shoot for two a month? A book and a bonus book. A book and a bonus book. I had a a book club that did this a long time ago, and most people read both books. Some people just read one or, you know, and we talked about both and they listened to both commentary and sometimes they were like, oh, I didn't read the bonus book, but I'm going to now. Yeah. So I think we should do that. And so for May, we have decided that our bonus book be All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. Very exciting. Yes. Very exciting. It's a great read. I haven't read it yet, so I'm very excited to read this. It is... Billed as a memoir manifesto. Hmm. Interesting. Very good. And it's got a lot of book bands on it. So Oh, that's how you know it's good. That's how you know it's good. As soon as a band has a band. A band has been enacted on a book. As soon as a book (laughs) has been banned, it gets added to my list. And usually I'm searching for it at the library. I'm searching for it on Amazon as quickly as possible. And depending on what's on my list right now and if I need a different take, then I will read it as soon as possible. So Band books get read. So. Band books get read. It's like a it's like a bestseller list, but mm-hmm. like for controversy. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna say like you know the bad girl at school. It's the bad book at school. Very enticing. Like immediately, your parent is like, "Don't date her. Don't date him. Don't date them." Oh, <laughs> suddenly I gotta sneak out and get it. <laughs> You're terrible. I bet that was you in high school. No, it absolutely was okay, not. Well, so yeah. you were living vicariously. Uh huh. Well, when books are banned, I automatically think, well, what's it banned for? And I look into it. And if it's yeah. just cursing, I'm like, okay, did they have too many f bombs? Was it was it an R movie in a PG thirteen format? So then I think, but if it's like, especially if it's LGBT content, I've got to read the book. Absolutely. And if it's violence or anti cops or something, it's like, yeah, I bet it's just protesting. I got to read this. So yeah. definitely look into that because if a book is banned, there's something in it you must find out. Yes. You must discover that knowledge. Someone doesn't want you to know. Someone doesn't want you to know it. They're, they're being mm. those gatekeepers. Mm. Absolutely. We don't like gatekeepers. We don't like gatekeepers. So- Get them out of here. But speaking of gatekeepers Uh-oh. and parents who choose what <laughs> books their kids read, Felix Ever After is suggested by Booklist for grades 8 through 12, and Kirkus Reviews suggests it for ages 14 and to 18. I want to get back to Kirkus in a moment, but it is our personal belief that only parents can decide at what age a book is appropriate for their child. Awesome. Absolutely. Okay, so now back to Kirkus. I came across a post by our incredible author calling out some pretty problematic issues with their review of their book. 
It's a little long, but I'd rather I'd rather give our author airtime than yes. their than Kirkus's review. So they write. Kirkus recently posted a review. So this is from April eleventh, twenty twenty. Okay. Kirkus recently posted a review of my novel Felix Ever After, saying that the portrayal of Felix's black race based on my own was quote culturally was not quote culturally rich end quote, and thus implying that my blackness is not quote black enough. End quote. Oh. Kirkus also said that Felix's self doubt and anxiety induced by transphobic trauma portrayed in the plot is quote exhausting end quote dismissing the trauma transgender and non-binary people face on a daily basis and implying that our trauma should be erased for the pleasure and entertainment of cisgender readers. The review also used inappropriate and offensive language to describe Felix's gender identity and his transition, Ah. including, quote, double mastectomy, end quote, instead of, quote, top surgery, end quote, trans, quote, trans boy, one word, end quote, instead of, quote, trans boy, two words, end Mm -hmm. quote, and describing Felix as, quote, sorry, this one's hard for me to say, and describing Felix as, quote, no longer a girl, end quote. Oh, I'm angry. Oh, but it goes on. It oh, goes what? on. Well, I mean, the, the 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 post does. It was only after public outcry with the online community post pointing out these errors that Kirkus corrected trans boy, one word, to trans boy, two words, and updated double mastectomy to top surgery. But this was only more hurtful. The journal has taken no accountability. They have not reached out directly to apologize, nor have they apologized to the transgender and non-binary readers who have expressed their hurt and concern. Additionally, because of the cosmetic changes for proper terminology, the journal now appears more knowledgeable about transgender and non-binary identities, giving the still otherwise unchanged and hurtful review more credibility. An educator or young reader who might have seen the incorrect language before would have known to dismiss the review. Now they might be influenced by Kirkus's racist and transphobic critique, hurting me, Felix Ever After, and any younger reader who might not be able to read my book because of their gatekeeping. Mm. The, I, I know. It's just, I'm so mad. Yeah. The irony of Felix's struggle with an anonymous transphobe and Kirkus's own description of, quote, the barrage of blatant ignorance and bigotry Felix faces, end quote, hasn't escaped me. Kirkus's disregard for my identity and trans and non-binary people was evident in the journal's problematic critique, incorrect and inappropriate language, and their dismissal of prior concerns. This is not the first time Kirkus has hurt marginalized authors and readers, and the journal needs to do better. Kirkus must take accountability instead of attempting to erase evidence of their ignorance by apologizing for the mistakes they have made and undoubtedly will make in the future, Respond to concerns of problematic reviews when questioned and stop their use of problematic language and critiques, focusing on the craft of the novel. Undergo staff training so that the journal knows how to better flag inappropriate reviews written by their freelance reviewers. Stop dismissing concerns over problematic reviews by claiming the reviewer is, quote, own voices, end quote, which suggests that there is one monolithic story and that no reviewer can have their own internalized biases. Until Kirkus makes actionable changes evident to me and the publishing community, I have requested that my books no longer be submitted for their review. I would not feel safe as a black, queer, and transgender person to allow Kirkus to potentially harm me and my readers again. Mm. So I know that's lengthy, but... But oh my gosh, how... So important for that, their yeah. voice to be heard. And how well written to just like very, very specifically call out each problematic part and tell us exactly why because that's that's and then the fact that they edited a couple word choices that that makes it even worse i wouldn't have thought about that unless they had you know i'd heard this and how they explained how that actually made the whole entire thing worse well word choices that were just egregious to begin with like yes it's called top surgery in the book. It's called yes. top surgery in life. So that's why I think devil mastectomy. This book is not about cancer. So that's what I go to think about. Like you should have called it what the book called it. Yeah. Like why are we saying trans boy one word? That's not. That's not a thing. That's so bizarre. Yeah. It's like when people say transgendered. It's not an. It's not a verb. Yeah. It's, it's an a- adjective. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not a gayed person. I'm a gay person. Well, sometimes I'm pretty gayed. Well, we're all a little gayed up. But <laughs> so I, I, I had to start with that. And unfortunately. And now my blood pressure is high. Mine too. Unfortunately, I have another disturbing story. Okay. 
So this is not the first time I read this book. Okay. I got it from a li- a large library the first uh-huh. time. Go libraries. Go libraries. This second read, I actually listened to the audiobook, which was amazing. Loved the narrator. Um, so I really got to enjoy that. And uh, I did both. You did both, yeah. I listened and read. But it was I great. got you the book mm-hmm. from our... Our local library. Our local library in North Texas, Dallas suburb. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple of branches. So I looked it up online because I was like, well, I only go to this one, but I don't I don't know if they do transfers because it's kind of small. So I was like, well, I'll just go to that one. It's, you know, I'll, I'll make an effort. Anyway, and I know you wanted to start reading it. So mm-hmm. long story short, I look it up. I'm like, okay, this branch has it. Awesome. It's not Pride Month, even though the book takes place in Pride Month, which I love. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I have time to get to get. I don't need to put it on hold. So I go after work that day. And I'm in the YA section. And I'm looking. And I'm which like, is where it belongs. Where it's, where it's a YA book. Again, mm-hmm. Kirkus, even though that's problematic. <laughs> Kirkus suggests it for 14 to 18. And Booklist suggests it for grades 8 through 12, which all of that falls into the young adult category. I'm looking, I'm like, I can't find it. I'm like, that's weird. And every, I mean, it's very common in libraries for books to be misshelved or it could be on a, in a return bin. Yeah. As soon as that book is scanned in, it says it's available. So I thought, yeah. well, I'll just have to go and ask them. And then I thought, well, there's another book I wanted to get. So I go also queer and in the YA section. So I'm like, well, before I address that, I'll go look for the other book. That book also wasn't there. I thought, well, this is weird. And then I had a thought. I had a thought back to library school. Mm-hmm. When we talked about censorship. Uh oh. And how some librarians self censor. Either they choose not to order the book in the first place, which That's is extra awful. Right, which is the worst type of self censorship, not yeah. even providing the book. Yes. But another type is taking a book that they deem questionable or too controversial or whatever, insert euphemism here for mm-hmm. too gay. Or too queer. Mm -hmm. And they put it in the adult fiction section. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this did not just happen. And I was, you know, kind of in my mind. And I was, I was marching. I was marching over there. And as soon as I got there and I got to the fiction in the seas and there was Felix Ever After, I picked up that book and I looked at it and I thought, oh no. And then I found the other book that I was looking for also there. Same thing. Same thing. Same category of, of young adult. So... I was so mad, I couldn't even address it with the person at the desk, with the librarian at the desk, not the librarian at the desk. I was so upset. Yeah. And usually we go into this blind so that it's it's a true conversation. But I got home. I called you and you came out to the car. I couldn't get out of the car. I was so mad. I know. And I had to tell you. And I said, I know we'll talk about it, but I've got to break the rule. And I got to tell you this. And you were like, what? I just, I can't believe I live in a city that does that. Yeah. Because the problem is that it's not able to be found by people browsing the YA section. Well, I'll or tell people you. people who look for it and think it's in the YA. I mean, yeah, if here, it had been one book, I might have said, eh, I'll just buy it. Yeah. And left the library. Yeah. But if but I was, was a queer kid and I knew my mom wasn't going to buy that. Exactly. And on top of that. So many, at least I know, you know, in my experience, I had a lot of internalized homophobia. I know it's very common in a lot of us or, or, um, you know, I mean, I can't speak from a trans experience, but I know a lot of people will will have like internalized transphobia and all these different things where we just as a queer community, bring a lot of of shame Mm -hmm. and a lot of just heavy feelings. So especially if you're, you know, still working through some stuff and you're like, that book is a lifeline for you, right? First of all, you find out this book exists and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, wow, this this is such an, aff- you know, an affirming story that I am like- Of self-acceptance and self Yes, self-love. I can see myself in these pages. And so you go to your library and you're like, hot darn, it's in, you know, it's checked in. Like I can just go get it. They you, have you it, don't, like they yeah, have it. They actually have it. How exciting. And you go and you look and it's not there. If you're dealing with feelings of shame or you're, you know, concerned you might be judged for checking out a book or something, are you gonna go the extra step to be like, hey, I can't find this. 
can you help me find that? Where would this be? No, you're going to be like, oh, that's weird. Well, most people don't even know that queer books get targeted for that all the time. So they're not going to instantly think. And of course, I didn't instantly think, but I was like, oh, no, they didn't. And then like, well, I got to find that yes, out. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. So I had that thought, but I've. I'm a, I've had that training. Mm-hmm. So and I was I was just very upset. So I I would have as a as a just a, a layman, citizen, yeah. a citizen. Um I would have been like I guess they don't have it. That's a bummer. Mhm. Oh, that makes me very angry. But my true hope and this is like this is terrible to like wish that somebody would do this, but um so books get stolen all the time from libraries. Mhm. One, because people are trying to ban it, and so they just steal it because they don't want people to check it out, which is horrible. Don't do that. But a lot of the times, kids who need the book but are too afraid to check it out and have it on their account steal it, and then they somehow, sometimes they return it, other times it gets lost, you know. They're, they're kids. And so I was like, well, maybe a kid just really needed it and, like, put it in their bag and, like, walked out or whatever, you know. And we, we don't support book we theft. We don't support book, th- book theft. But, oh. Just bookmark it and read it and put it back on the shelf when you're done and then come back the next day and read yeah. it, you know? Yeah. Oh, I read so many books as a kid that way. Oh, yeah. Just I didn't want my library. mom to know what I was checking out. Yeah, I'm checking out all this girl stuff. Nope. All right. <laughs> nope. <laughs> all right. Now, can we get to this incredible content of this book now? We've had a lot of negative things happen. We've, we've, had, a, we've had a lot. We've had a lot. Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. Calendar is black, queer, trans, and uses they, he pronouns. So I want to start first by the dedication. I love it. I think it's one of my favorite dedications of all time. And I want to read it because I think this should be shouted. And actually... But let's not shout it because I'll have to no, adjust I'm not gonna some shout levels. It. I'm not going to shout it. But when Appreciate I heard it, because yeah. I listened to the audiobook this time around, yeah. rewound it uh-huh. and I turned it up really loud and played it. Because <laughs> I was trying, like, I just wanted to, like, send you that... You wanted to shout it. I wanted to shout it and send it to the universe. But it was too long to remember word for word, so I just replayed it really loud. All right. For trans and non-binary youth, you're beautiful, you're important, you're valid, you're perfect. No. Oh. I know, I get I can't to, shout it. I get like I the back of my throat's all tight. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to yell when you're crying. It it <clears throat> is, but yet sometimes I do. Yes. So that was probably one of my I mean it's not even it's just so I can't even talk. I'm just I love it so much. Like I'm just I'm flabbergasted. I just You are. Just say I just oh gosh. I just this whole book is just the ultimate gift, I think, to yes. to the community and yes. especially especially and, trans and non-binary folks mm-hmm. absolutely especially trans and non-binary people of color because their stories have yes. not been told for many many years yes. while gay and lesbian stories mm-hmm. have been told and they're getting awards and they're getting all this stuff and they're not getting the same recognition and the same amount of, of yeah. their time and so i just when i read this it was you have a lot of queer characters in it so when i yes. read it i just thought you have other representation it's not just about queer trans and non-binary mm-hmm. and I just I just love it so much and um I I absolutely love how much as a reader we connect with Felix and you know we talk a lot about differences and similarities and and stuff in you and I's day-to-day life like that we celebrate the differences and we enjoy the similarities. I mean, that's that's part of community is there's always something different and always something similar within each two people, right? That you can just kind of see that, right? And so getting to know Felix and understanding Felix's, his, his journey. journey, his day-to-day life, his fears, his dreams, his struggles his you know everything and i could connect so much with you know feeling other and struggling to figure out things that didn't quite work i i know when i was a kid um there were so many like everybody and their pet goat that's a weird way to say it based on my next sentence but everybody and their pet goat was dating and oh. i was like why does nobody love me a lot of other people with pet goats that they could date you know, your pet goat could date. yeah there were a lot of pet goats dating other pet goats well they gotta they, yeah okay yeah they gotta procreate yep yeah like i said it was a poor choice but i just remember being in 
middle school and high school and everybody was dating. I was like, nobody loves me. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember... I had the opposite problem. People wanted to date me and I was like, you know. Okay. I didn't mean it like that, but like I had a... No, I wasn't beating them off with a stick, but there was was interest. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'm not surprised. You're pretty, uh, pretty fantastic. Meanwhile, I think I was throwing out all the weirdest vibes. So, kept chasing off best friends. It yeah. happens. But I really related to his anxiety. Oh, yeah. Because I dealt with so much of that growing up and even into adulthood. Mm-hmm. And so, I hate to bring it back to the, the terrible review, but when it didn't recognize that that's something that trans people and queer people in general, but especially trans oh, people. Yes. And I would say like, especially, especially trans people of color, because there's a part in the book where he mentions that because he is a trans person of color, his life expectancy is in his early 30s. That that stopped me. Mm-hmm. Like, I just stopped. I had to take a beat. Because... That anxiety is... We need a stronger word for that because it's a severe anxiety. Yeah. That's it's, real. Yeah, it's it's a like a life-shortening, you know... Um, Oh, what's the word for that? Not acute, but chronic. chronic. A chronic anxiety that's just pasted on top of everything else you deal with. I really enjoyed in this book how much we got to examine the layered way that different identities kind of stack. Intersectionality plays a part. And it... Um, it made me think of something, and and I'm going to try to describe a metaphor, and I talk with my hands. So, Anna, this will look one way to you, but listeners, just try to picture what my hands are doing. No more goats, right? Are no more goats. goats? We're okay. done with goats. We're going to just uh, put them in a field, because they like that, presumably. Anyway, each of us has dreams, goals, things that we want in life, right? things we enjoy or what have you, like whether it's being on a school team or a job or, you know, one day I want to be a mother or father or have a a significant other, I have a house, whatever it is, right? Everybody has that. It's a unifying experience of having a goal and a dream. And then our identities, the more they are not centered and rewarded and treated as normal by society around us and become treated as other, like as a woman, if you're a woman, not a man, or if you're non-binary or trans and not a just a cisgendered man, that's other. So let's put a filter over your goal. Okay, now if you're not white, let's take another filter and put that over your goal. You have okay. a disability. Oh, you have a disability. Put a filter over your goal. Or are you a person of color? Put a filter. I think I already said that. But we'll just put more filters over it. Um, you know, are you... Uh, it distorts the image. Yeah. It's real hard to get to that goal. You can still do it. But how much extra effort to stay focused on that goal? And I was just like, oh, that's, that's a lot. Totally doable, but that's a lot. I think that's why for me when the, his teacher, Jill, was mm-hmm. telling him to do so portraits and he was like, oh, she's just saying that. And I remember being like, no, like, do, you do start it. to like argue with it. That's how you know it's a great book because you're yes. like, no, you need to do it. Go like, do it, Felix. You know them so well, you just want to like jump in and talk to them. Like, okay, pep talk over, let's go. <laughs> and then when he finds out that he makes the showcase and... Mm. Way to jump to the end. Well, it's just so think, good, though. Like, when I think about that, like, how hard he had to work, because at one point he was he was working on it, and mm-hmm. he was having a tough time, and he, like, mm-hmm. destroyed the painting. Just, yeah, just really disconnected yeah. from it. And I just I just think for, for him that was so important, because he has had to work harder. Because he, yeah. he's, his dad is making ends meet. I just, I had... And I his loved... best friend has a trust fund coming up. Oh boy! <laughs> so I just was like, talk about two, 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 different, two worlds. different worlds. Yeah, I had such a, and this is this was so well written, but I had such a complicated relationship with Felix's father because you're like, oh yeah, oh my gosh, he is busting his butt, mm-hmm. working all these jobs and doing everything, paying for top surgery, paying like 
doing everything on paper. And, you know, Felix took us on that journey of understanding just how much his father was doing. Let's and spend yet, the night at his best friend's house? Yes. When they smoke weed? Like, that's a great dad. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like, he'd just go in the extra mile and then would... Dead name him. Dead name him, wouldn't say his name, would misgender him. And I was just like, oh, gosh. And... Yeah. and Definitely a love-hate relationship. Yeah, and you just... you. Golly, that would be a lot to every day go home and be like, I love, well, not every day go home. Sometimes he goes to Ezra's, but to, to see your father and be like, I love you. And I know how much you work to make this possible for me to honor who I am and yet to fall so short in, in, just a very important way. Very important way. So here's what really got me, because he's listing this pretty, I feel like it's pretty early on in the book, and then it doesn't get addressed t- toward the till the end, but mm. when he was saying that his, his dad tells him that he'll always be his little girl oh. after he's been drinking, yeah. and that one I just, I mean, I had to pause the audiobook. I was so upset. I, just, yeah. I mean, I know that sounds dramatic, but like, I'm not trying to be dramatic. Like, no. I was just like, I couldn't list. I needed a moment. You need a moment to be like, oh. Because like, I can almost understand the name and pronouns, even though it's been, you know, five years. Yeah, you don't slip. I know, you don't slip. Bit, after that long. And, you know, it's been told to me from from people who you know, have known someone like almost their whole life and then they transitioned in their 20s and like now it's been like 10 years that they had to mourn the loss of their former self, the former friend, uh-huh. while celebrating the birth of their new gender. And it's like a lot of the times they still like the same stuff. They're still the same person. But it, it, is, a, it is a shift in thinking about that person. Yeah. And so... I, I got that. Like, you're you're mourning your little girl, you know, from Easter dresses and all this stuff. So, I get that. But you don't still call them a little girl. Yeah, go and, do that separately. Yeah, and it's like, you you don't... Not call a little girl separately, right. but, like, mourn it. Right, and you don't put baby group. pictures up. Oh. Maybe just the very baby when they don't look like any gender. You know, yes. just, like, plain baby. You're, like, a plain unisex baby. baby. Just give me a regular baby. <laughs> but not the just one, a, yeah. a neutral baby. Not the ones where they're, like, the butt's showing, but, like, a cute one with, like, yeah. smiling in their crib. Yeah. So something like that. But then you put all the other pictures in the shoebox, and when you're sad, you look at them. Or when you're happy, you just but want you to don't... celebrate your kid. Because you do, you want to remember those times. Yeah. But you don't display them. And that might be hard because, you know, for the first 12 years of his life, he was someone else. And that's a lot of... I well, mean, he wasn't of... someone else. He looked... I didn't mean he was someone else. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he was someone else to his dad. Yes. That's how he was... His dad saw his him. His dad said it. Yes. So, for me, it's like... I just... The, you know, the pictures need to be put up. And, like, the fact that he still had them on his Instagram... Just because, like, his dad was so insistent that he might want to look at them one day. And I'm not blaming the dad for the gallery. No, I'm it's just, just... It's just... It's, it's like one of those things uh, out of obligation to this parent that has provided him so much. I get... I get that, you know, as a kid, you're like, I honor my parent. Look how much he sacrificed for me. Fine, I'll just leave him. I'm going to tell you, when that gallery thing happened, where... Felix was dead named and all the pictures showed up. I screamed at the audiobook. I screamed at my car because it was in my car at the time. I screamed at it. I said, what? No. No. Yeah. No. Like, I just kept screaming, no. I was like, <laughs> maybe if I scream it loud enough, it won't have happened. Didn't didn't work that way, turns out. it's You can't just undo it. But I think that was relevant to the plot for many reasons, but specifically because transgender... People get targeted so often. Maybe mm-hmm. not as blatantly, mm-hmm. but they get targeted. Well, and I, the process directly after the gallery, where Felix is in class, Ezra has helped him take everything down. Mm-hmm. Um, Felix is in class, and all these kids just kept coming up. And they were like, I'm so sorry. Which I get they're coming from a place of, gosh, this is this was awful. I'm so, so like, sorry. Read the room. Yeah. And then they would always say, and I'm trying to remember if I wrote it down. But um, I think it was driving. <laughs> they kept saying, I'm so sorry. 
and there, they would ask about his dead name or they would ask about... I never knew you were called that. And they, they never mentioned it because it, it's not important. Yeah, anymore. and I loved that. I do, I, I loved love that, that detail. Okay, good. I wrote that down. I, like, I, I That they just keep... He says... Um, he calls it his um, his old name, I think. I think that's what he says. And then, like, later when he was talking about his dad, he calls it his real name because his real name is Felix. His real name is Felix. And I love. It loved, doesn't matter what he was called before. It doesn't. Irrelevant. I absolutely loved uh, at the end when his dad was like, Felix really is just the perfect name for you. Mm-hmm. And I mean, how. I mean, you could just feel the warmth that Felix felt inside. To have his father finally say that to him, oh, it was such a it was such a good moment. But um, did you get the very end though when Ezra says it also means happy? So the book is happy ever after. Yes. Okay. I just I love that detail at the very end. It's just it's just so well written. Like I just I read this book and then I start, I was like I instantly wanted to reread it. Like I just wanted to mm-hmm. fall back into this world. I mean not some mm-hmm. of the, not some of the hard stuff like the gallery, but you see how his friends support him, mm-hmm. most of them. Can we talk most about of- Can we talk about Marisol? Oh. Cuz I wanted I never boy. wanted to I hit so a fictional angry character, at her. but I think I would I would punch her. Yeah. In like, I, fictional world, in a like, fictional world. In a fictional in a fictional world. Yeah, I just a I'd be your lookout. Human, I'd be your lookout. Okay. Well, the fact I that- could not believe her comment to him. The- a, she was terrible to him just before that comment happened. But then when he addresses it with her later, she was like, "No, but I'm glad the gallery happened. People should know." And I was like, "Whoa, oh, what?" It's like she doubled down on how awful of a human she was acting like. Like literally, Marisol is just a giant turf. Mm-hmm. I, I. Oh. They live among us, and they hide. They were friends. He I went know. on several dates with her. Yeah, because he was like, "Wow, look how confident she is! Like, you know, what an amazing person!" And then, not so amazing after all. Turns out, no, she had amazing wallpaper, but then underneath, rotted, her, wood. rotted wood. Yeah, I feel like it's rotted. Yep. termites, and- termite infested. Mm-hmm. Marisol. Asbestos or whatever that's called. Yeah, she's got Everything. that too. She's, yep. Oh, I didn't like her. Mm-hmm. How and can you be a misogynist because you didn't, like, you don't identify as a woman? That doesn't make any sense. Not, that doesn't make any sense. But it, okay, it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense for a turf to say. Yeah, that's a total turf line. Like, it just... Like, if when they get their turf handbooks, mm-hmm. that's, like, Is in that the top like, ten. Top ten. Yeah. I don't know what the rest are, but I don't think we need to worry about well, looking sure them up. I'm sure we heard them. But oh, I'm sure. Tried to block Let's them just out. look up uh, J.K. Rowling's Twitter, and we'll find several. Mm. I know. I'm still angry. Okay, let's take a break from so, that before. I can't, can't stand her. But Ezra's response was like, oh. "We're done. We're done. Like we're done. Like don't." Yes. And he, they they used that word. And I I scream cheered on Ezra. I was like, "That's mm-hmm. right. You tell her. That's right." Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just. Oh. Ezra. Is such a good friend. I I somehow was surprised that they got together. Like, I don't know why. I think because they were just such good friends. And there I didn't get the vibe, you know? And a lot of friendships are like that, that lead to love. That you don't always uh, no, get the vibe. I, or, did I, you get a vibe? I got a vibe. Okay. I so. think the gallery was such, was so, threw me off so much. That you had trouble the picking yeah. up and, the lock. And so when you know. he goes in is trying to like catfish Declan into seeing that. And then yes. it, I had kind of like forgotten about how close he was with Ezra. And then he was yeah. like, I was like, oh yeah, well he dated him. And then they were like, oh, when we find out that Declan mm-hmm. and Ezra dated, I was like, what? Yeah. And then he broke up with him because he felt like he was in love with Felix. And I was like, whoa. And I was like, ah, I gotta keep reading. It's, yes. You know, midnight, keep going. Yes. This is a this is an unput downable book. Yes. Oh my gosh. It was so wonderfully written that every step of the way it would be like, we're gonna kinda point towards mm-hmm. Declan. Like, yes, yes, it's him. I know it's him. And it was like, we're gonna kinda point towards Marisol. Yes, yes, it's her. I know it's her. <laughs> we're gonna like every time I fall for it, hook, line, and sinker. And then when it finally came out, spoiler alert, that it was Austin, I was like it makes total sense. Why didn't I see this coming? You know, like, I didn't because it was well written, but it makes perfect sense. And I loved how close Felix and um, Austin's cousin, 
Yeah, Leah. Leah. I wanted to call her June, and I was like, that's not right. I also want to be her friend. Like, so many people from this book. She's like, like, I'm going to... Because she was the one that was hacking everybody's phones, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I loved her. I loved her so much. And then all of her, she was like, can we still, like, hang out and stuff? When (laughs) she can stop. Yeah. Because I think he was just ready to move on and move past it. But Absolutely. Can we talk about the Austin thing and the things he says? Because I... Yeah. I really resonated with, with what he said. Not obviously supporting it, but like... <laughs> you, you weren't pro-Austin. I wasn't pro-Austin, no. Um, just pro-Austin, Texas. You know, keep it weird. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Keep it real keep weird, it real Texas. Weird. Mm-hmm. Well, Austin, Texas, at least. Austin. But, yeah. um... Oh, let me find it. When he, um... He says trans people are taking up their spaces. Which oh. Which he's implying it's like white gay guy. I wrote down white gay guy problems. But so often... This happens where it's old or older mm-hmm. or middle aged, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever old is, but white cisgender cisgender gay men who mm-hmm. are on committees planning benefits for mm-hmm. the LGBT community, but it's all gay and lesbian stuff, mm-hmm. or it's all gay stuff, or mm-hmm. it's all men, or all mm-hmm. the men are getting the awards, all the men are on the committee. There's very few young people, there's very few women or trans or non or people gosh, star non-binary people yeah. like they exist and they yeah. deserve to be represented on these committees and they're not getting tapped to serve those roles i can't tell you how many times i would look out at a, like a, a committee when i was a reporter and uh, for for a gay paper and like it's all whitewashed it's all a bunch yeah. of old white men yeah there was um there was an interview oh i'm trying to remember now anyway that they were talking about uh it was on cameron esposito's podcast query mm-hmm Give it a listen. It's great if you haven't. Uh, but anyway, she was speaking with someone and they were talking about in Chicago, uh, there was, you know, a committee that was incredibly whitewashed and they were basically, the goal was to kind of set up a safe space for young queer kids. And the kids that needed the most help and the kids that were in that area were predominantly people of color. There were a lot of trans youth. And so here's this service that's supposed to help them. And then, you know, because sometimes like if you're dealing with homelessness Mm -hmm. and you're struggling to find enough food, occasionally one or two of them would like steal food from a Whole Foods right there. Mm -hmm. And so then they're now trying to ban the very children they're supposed to be helping. Because they were stealing? Because there was like one one or, you know, one or two kids. It's like, dude, just give them food. Here's a solution. Give them food. If they're dealing with homelessness, why you're literally your purpose is to help them and this now is you're how trying they need to be helped. Yes. Oh, I I just get so frustrated when our community ends up with people that feel like for their individual self with less intersectionality i mean let's be real us as white lesbians have you know a fewer of those filters on right. than than others but when members of our community which are predominantly white cisgendered gay men or lesbians uh, when those members of our community get very gatekeepery and be like, no, I got what I needed now. Now we just, let's just block everybody else out. Dude, open the door and hold it open and let everybody in with you. This is not a gatekeeper situation. Yeah, when when he was talking, I, I immediately jumped to city non-discrimination ordinances Mm -hmm. because when they i said when they got popular but when when cities started taking this on in um the late 90s early 2000s they didn't include gender identity and expression because they knew they couldn't win so they thought we'll take the win and just get sexual orientation and so you know 2014, that was when I left the paper, but now you have, starting, you know, back then, they had all these ordinances being revisited, and they were fighting to get gender identity and expression added. And I just, it made me so mad, because so many people, and I, so many gay people, and I think they still feel like this, and they just don't talk about it, think that gay issues are different than trans issues, and I don't believe that. I think gender and sexuality are so intertwined in our mm-hmm. identity, you can't separate the two. Mm-mm. And saying, you know, well, 
we'll, you know, get rid of one just so we can get a win. Like, no, you just keep fighting until you get both. Yes. That we're a community. Mm-hmm. We're a family. And but if, it's so divided sometimes. Oh, it just, it's so frustrating. And it's like, if you leave certain family members out, we're not being a community. Like, the the but you reason... you don't leave someone home when you go to a vacation. Yeah, well, I mean, unless you're, you're home alone, Macaulay yeah. Culkin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor kid. I mean, you know, great movie. Just not at all problematic in any way. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you look back at, speaking of um, people of color, you look at, in the 90s, basically almost every movie is set in New York, and there's a street scene, and there are no black people, and I'm like, guys, do y'all really know what New York looks like? Like, it is not a white city. Like, well, that's it not is their, That's not diverse. their target audience for the movie, which is ridiculous. Don't show oh, me brother. what you think I want to see. Show me what it's actually like. Show me New York. Mm-hmm. Wait, or was that in New York? Which was one? Was the second one in New York? One of them, I don't know. It's Were they been both a, in New York? a very long time since I've seen them. It has been a long time. Well, you know, I don't think people are tuning in for our takes on Home Alone. <laughs> um, okay. So I want to talk about these hundreds of draft emails to his mother. Mm. That was rough. That was... I can't imagine what... I mean, I... I have a complicated relationship with my mother. Same. But I cannot begin to imagine what a parent choosing to abandon you would do. And that was before he came out as trans. So she didn't even respond Mm -hmm. to him coming out to her via email. Mm -hmm. It's like he didn't exist. It's like she erased her family. And I mean, I... Believe me, I get it. If you, maybe you, you you went into this marriage and you didn't, you know, you didn't really love someone. Or you, you know, you drifted apart and you don't love them anymore. But then you get a divorce and you have a custody agreement and you go and you marry this other person. Sounds like you're speaking from personal experience. I mean, I did do that, but it was... Less so about falling out of love and more so about, oh, I'm gay. Hmm. Turns out. Spoiler alert. I really thought, and I know this is just me thinking that everything's going to be great at the end, but I, I love how realistic this book was. Yes. And the fact that I really, so I really believed that she was going to respond when he came I out as a Demi, her Demi Boy. I so bad. But then when she didn't and I like got to the end and I was like, you know what? But that's realistic. Like yeah. that's true to the situation. Yeah. And when you have everything that's perfect at the end, you kind of go like, oh, okay, well that's not really realistic. And mm-hmm. I think it kind of, it kind of sours it, it for you. All of the incredibly emotional moments, all of the incredibly touching beautiful warms you from the inside out moments like when felix discovers demi boy and is like mm-hmm. this is it that's it that's me that's me and then the, when um what was it uh the the non-binary person at the resource center yeah oh, i forgot their name was it uh well i'm blinking but they were like when when you know you know yeah and he was like no, no. i want to figure it out they're like You'll know, you'll know when you see it, when you feel it. Like it just yeah, takes it just, time. And, it just hits right. And Flex was like, okay. And he kind of walks away from that. And then, then it happens. Yeah. And I just loved that moment of, of recognition for yes. him. And just. But yeah, but my point was like, all of those moments are earned so organically because you see how much Felix has to go through. You know, I, like every step of the way. But um, on that same note, when he tells Ezra, and this just made me love Ezra even more. Um, he tells Ezra that it's not fair for him to question his identity after putting his dad through all that. Meaning, he says all that, but he mm-hmm. means his transition, top yeah. surgery, and things like that. And Ezra says, you didn't put him through all that. That's right. I just Go Ezra. I Go just, Ezra, you tell I just him. love that. And it's like... So much of this book, and I think when he doesn't address the pronoun stuff and the mm-hmm. the commenting on being a little girl, mm-hmm. because I think he he thinks, well, he's done so much. I have I kind of have to like let it go, like pick your battles, and it's like that's a battle you have to always fight. You need yes. you know, but I think like for me, 
when my mom kind of started to come around and accept me for being gay and invited my partner over for dinner, that was a win. Mm -hmm. So at dinner, when she said problematic things, I didn't address it. Yeah. Until a while later when things kept coming up. So it's like you kind of just, I don't want to say you take what you can get, but obviously his dad is a lot more supportive (laughs) than my mom ever was. But I just think like, I think you've got, it being a problem that his his dad has done so much, but he can't get over like yeah this big hurdle yeah. And Felix is is well to his dad it it his feels dad, like yeah. a big hurdle. It's like dude, just call your son by his name. And then when he questions if he's lovable as a black trans person, okay. So I that have just kills me. It did. It killed me too. I have. Um, I'm very proud of what I'm about to say. So. If you tear it apart, be gentle. Because I do feel like I, I got something here. Okay. Okay. Is this another metaphor? Yes. Okay, here we go. Okay. So, Felix's cat, Captain. Mm-hmm. Throughout the entire story, and I paid close attention to this, so I'm pretty sure I'm right. Throughout the entire story, when Felix was struggling and feeling like he didn't have love, even though his last name is Love, um, and he's... You know, just like, ah, I I want this so badly. I'm struggling with this at school or that or a relationship or whatever. When he's in those moments of trial and pain, Captain will not let him pet him. Captain's always near him or he tries to pick him up and Captain runs away. And then the, like, two times that Felix is actually, like, petting him or, you know, actually interacting in a loving way with Captain is like when things are clicking for him and he's actually having, you know, those like breakthrough moments. I know t- I took, I took a lot of notes about captain. Um, but yeah, it's like when he's actively like cuddling with him, Felix is making that progress. Captain is love. Captain is Felix's journey with self love and therefore being able to love someone else. So it's like that love was there the whole time. Ezra's been in love with him, but he Felix couldn't. He, he liked him from when he first exactly. Got yeah, there's even that moment where Ezra's mm. like, "I I knew I loved you." Like when you even brought on that kitten. I feel like it's a reach, but I accept it. Okay, I think it's Theory good. Is valid. Okay, thanks. We will proceed. Stamp seal of approval. <laughs> Stamp seal of approval. That's an interesting take. Um. I have it, like, in all caps in my notes. I just want you to know. Okay. Let's talk about Ezra and how, when they're talking about labels, he says he doesn't use labels. And he asks a good question about if there were not labels and no straights, would there be homophobia? And then, in that same conversation, they go on to say that labels connect us and are a thing Mm -hmm. to be proud of. So, what do you think if there were no labels? I thought that's an interesting question. So, I think labels are amazing when we put them on ourselves and we say, this fits me and this is something that makes me feel proud and whole. I think labels are dangerous and awful when others put them on us because no matter what the intent is behind it, it's not organically placed. And so often especially in the queer community, when somebody's putting a label on you, it's not always done with love. It's not, it's, it's often done to separate and other us. And divide. Yeah. Mm hmm. And, um, at that point, labels become targets and that's when it's dangerous. That's when it's bad. Even if, and we'll, we'll go way out there. We'll say, even if there was no straight, we're still talking about intersectionality. We're still talking about a person of color. We're still talking about gender identity and uh, trans identity or non-binary person. Like we're still talking about other because as much as some po- some people will, will be like, you know, if everybody could just accept everybody and everything was great, you know, it wouldn't be a problem. And it's like, you know, I love that, but it's not reality. It's not where we are. And when we woke up this morning, 
in Texas, in the United States, you know, there, there's a couple news articles out there talking about how the don't say gay bill in Florida, Texas is trying to pass that. So when you wake up and in your community, the queer community, you have your own state's lawmakers actively campaigning against you to remove rights. It, labels are... Labels in that regard are just designed to keep certain people in power and to harm others. That, that's it. And I wish it weren't true. I wish that trans youth in, in Texas weren't so aggressively and egregiously attacked with our law, you know, by our lawmakers. Um, there are some amazing, amazing people out there that are doing work from every, <laughs> every different angle to try to get people the care they need, to try to um, fight these unjust laws, but in the meantime, there's just a whole lot of harm being done. And, uh, and even if, you know, even if the, the situation with, um, the CBS having to investigate child abuse for gender affirming care, even if that goes <sighs> away, like say it goes away tomorrow, it's gone. Boom. Would love that. Would love that. The damage is still done. Mm -hmm. You've told trans kids that they shouldn't have the necessary doctor ordered mm -hmm. care mm -hmm. that they need and that they want. Mm -hmm. You don't, I don't believe that all trans people need to be on hormones. It's, it's or, an individual or need to have medical procedures. Right. Exactly. It's so, up to that individual yeah, exactly. trans person or if they're a minor, them and their, their parents. So for some people, it doesn't apply to them. But they should have the choice. Yes. They should not... It should, shouldn't be a blanket It should statement. be an option. There we go. I was going to say, wait, it should be an option. Yeah. And so my my concern is just the, you know, the, the mentality of, you know, am I deserving of, of care? Am I deserving of love? Because he talks about in the book, Felix talks about um, that so often trans people are discriminated against mm -hmm. in healthcare. He talks about other things like losing jobs and mm -hmm. things like that, but in healthcare particularly, mm -hmm. um, especially because, you know, bodies are weird and even everybody's not, body is everybody's weird. body is weird. And you know, y you transition, but you still have an annual and you've got stuff that needs to be looked at and questions that need to be asked. You want someone who's going to be respectful mm -hmm. of your gender identity mm -hmm. and using the right pronouns mm -hmm. and, and maybe not say horrendously offensive stuff mm -hmm. while you're being naked in front of them. I mean, yeah. I don't think that's, that's too that's much really to horrible ask. That's really when you're in front yes. of a doctor. Oh, that's the worst part for me. I'm like, oh, is this so, first of all, your hands are cold. Second of all, can this be over? Like, yeah. it's just, and oh. I identify as a cisgender woman and I'm still uncomfortable. So I can only imagine. Mm-hmm. What that's like for someone mm -hmm. who is non-binary or transgender and doesn't, let alone, just that situation, let alone if they don't feel safe in their, in their, in their city or town with their healthcare provider. So that for me is just like, it's just so important mm -hmm. that we continue to support organizations that provide healthcare to LGBT people, mm -hmm. gender affirming healthcare. Yes, absolutely. Oh, so it's a super light episode. Super light episode. Yeah, just just full of fun and frills. Mm -hmm. No heavy hitting mm -mm. issues. Uh, gosh, I loved this book. Mm -hmm. I loved this book. <laughs> okay, so s slight fun bit. When Austin is throwing breadsticks at the Olive Garden... When he and Ezra broke up. Oh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> there was, like, there okay. were some good laughable moments in this book. I think mm -hmm. they did a good job of breaking up the heavier, the, hev the heavy, serious issues. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. Like, it goes back to what I was saying earlier that 
so much of those feel good moments, whether it's a light moment or whether it's like the, those really big pivotal moments where you're like, Oh, Felix. Yes. Um, like they're so earned. Like you just, you see, you know, every bit that Felix went through and you're just like, yes. Well, originally I was disappointed when Ezra and Felix kissed Mm -hmm. because, and Ezra declares his love because mm-hmm. I wanted Felix to be like, yeah, I love you too. And he was like, oh, and maybe unsure. And then the, just, it kind of falls apart for a little while. And I was like, no, what's happening? It was yeah. again, I was like, come here, let me jump in this book and give you a pep talk. Yeah. And then we're going to fix this. <laughs> but then, you know, you, you wait it out and you see he goes through the thing with Declan and you realize... It's been his inability to like love himself and to think he yes. deserves love yes. from Ezra because Ezra is the person that's always there for the hand. Oh yeah, and so I, I just like that once that journey is mm-hmm. is is on the on the on the way on the tracks. Yeah. I don't know, but I yeah. just was like, we're here, and then the pride. It was just so cute. It was. And it's like that moment in um, Love Victor, the TV show, mm-hmm. where they're like, picture. You know, oh, your yeah, future, who, who mm-hmm. would you, who would you want in it? Mm-hmm. And he's like trying to decide between. Was it like your best day or something happened? And who yeah. do you want to tell? He's like, close yeah. your eyes. He's like, do yeah. it. It's who fine. Is it? Who is it? Yeah. Who would it be? Who, who and would... it's Raheem or um, help me with the other guy. Long hair coffee band. We know. We know. Benji. Benji. I didn't Thank get you. There. There's so many names, so many books, so many stories. But oh, this I is know. Good. So many so queer, good. So many queer but stories. But anyway, okay. But anyway, I loved, I loved that part, and I was like, okay, yes. I'm not gonna criticize Calendar's work because they're amazing, and I just have to like realize, okay, th- there's the point because this is the third book I read by them. Yes. And each book I've read, I've loved. I've loved even more than the last one. It just gets better. It just gets better. I just, I'm just so like I. I think they're just a gem to the world. They are a gift. As a human. And like yes. I said, this book is a gift. We don't deserve them, but we're so thankful they're here. I think that's why, and and not that it wouldn't have upset me with other queer books, because there was another queer book that was misplaced from YA to fiction. But when I realized that self-censoring ha- happening by the librarians, it made me even more upset because this book is so vital. And yeah. Absolutely. And necessary. Absolutely. And students must read it. Yes. Teenagers must read it. Yes. Well, teenagers are students, but... But I'm, in yes. a public library, teenagers. Yes. All, all of it, yes. Oh my gosh, that moment where you ha- we have this, this payoff from the beginning of the book to the end, where he and Declan, Felix and Declan go, and they're going to go like spend some time at Declan's grandpa's, and you're like... And he's like, oh, oh, oh hey, I know you. Yeah. And it's literally the the old man okay, from like, the bus. Like my grandson. I thought that was so cute. That was adorable. Was his, I screamed again in the car. It was his kid who was Declan's dad that didn't support yes. him and kicked him out. Yes. And he's like, I'll take you. Come on. And like, I just think that's so such an interesting take because so often like that does happen. Mm-hmm. Like the older generation surprises us and takes in mm-hmm. the queers and supports them and loves them enough to. Let them invite like, like, a boyfriend I'll, over. Yeah, uh, or I'll sell my house. At the time, I'll yeah. D- yeah. Yeah, I'll sell my house and go to college. Absolutely. I I had some complicated feelings about Declan and Felix's relationship. Same. Hated it. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> just, so not complicated, not turns complicated. out. Well, I, I loved that as it went... It went on, okay, A, let's not lie to people to start as a basis of a relationship. Right. That's always a bad call. I do feel like he was warranted. He, or he was, it like, was warranted for him to see if he could find out who, because the school wasn't doing oh, anything. Oh, yes, agree. But, but when he kept going. Yeah, that was. That was where it was like, ooh, woof. Teenagers. Like, when I was a teenager, I didn't always yeah, make the best decisions. we're not making the best decisions, decisions at mm-hmm. times, no. Too many hormones. Mm-hmm. But. And the prefrontal cortex is not It is developed. just not, yeah. Their reasoning skills. Woof. They make interesting choices. I, at moments, I would feel for Declan Mm -hmm. because I would be like, gosh, I mean, just a great example of hurt people hurting people from both sides. I mean, every character here, every character, I can't think of one that 
didn't have this unless we just didn't know enough about them. But like every character had something going on that was causing, you know, causing pain. Um, whether it was a parent that wasn't accepting or a parent that was absent or parents that were working too much. That yeah, he can't come out. Exactly. So it's like all these different teenagers had very complicated, very adult problems that they were having to deal with. And then be teenagers and like go to school. And, and, uh, and what is viewed as one of the most accepting places in America, in absolutely, New York. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, um, like, one minute you wanted to strangle Declan or slap him or punch him or whatever it is. Whatever violence you were you were wanting to, to threaten him with. Um, but then you kind of just have these moments where you're like, oh, that... I mean, he deserves love too. He deserves to have some personal growth, meet a special someone, you know, have in his future. But when they had their their rendezvous, when they went to to Declan's grandfather's, I I wanted to just kind of smack him upside the head because it's another punchable moment for yes, me yes he made i have strong feelings about this book. yes he made so many assumptions mm-hmm. about what felix would want so many assumptions about uh felix's own body without talking to felix like literally all of the problems i have with Declan at that point could be completely solved by consent by being like hey what do you want to do hey does this feel good hey are you into this no hey is this your first time and he's like what's happening <laughs> yeah just I was like what i just i just kissed a guy uh, like two I days ago, just, yes. three days ago yeah yeah like um whoa <laughs> whoa it also bothered me that he expected something to happen as a way for him to prove that he loved him more than ezra it that's was it really, was getting really emotionally that's not manipulative. That's a reason to be physical no, with someone. No, 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 you shouldn't have to prove yourself. That, no, that really bothered me. And like again, the consent thing mm-hmm. is so important mm-hmm. to just. I just oh I, I just liked him so much in that moment and then later when they're like yeah we can be friends or maybe we can be friends I was like no he's crazy but I was like okay well let me be a little bit more sympathetic and what he was going through and mm-hmm. his experience but it just. That scene bothered me, but I liked, I liked the inclusion of it because I think it showed kind of how to get out of it. Yeah. And Felix like standing up for himself and be like, I'm not ready. I was so proud of Felix so for proud. that. Sometimes I think it's hard and people go along and they just, oh, it's bad. And that's yeah. just, or they. It's just a recipe to make sex very complicated in the future. Mm-hmm. And I was so proud of Felix. You know, if you can't talk about it before you have it, you shouldn't be having it. I would I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. Um yeah. I uh I'm a I'm a big fan of consent. I mean, that's one thing I love about lesbian relationships is there's typically a whole lot of talking involved in 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 sex. And uh it was not my experience in a heterosexual relationship. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bummer did cry when Felix's father finally said his name. Oh, yes. I cried so many times. I just, <laughs> like I said, strong feelings, but I think, oh, gosh, I just, I love so many of the books that we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. But this book just speaks to me because I've known kids and I haven't been able to give them books in their hands that reflected who they are. Mm-hmm. And so you just give them the next best thing, which is normally whitewashed. Mm-hmm. And so to have, sorry, I'm, <clears throat> you got the gliss in the eyeballs. I do. Me too. To have an author who I would assume puts themselves through a very vulnerable process. Mm-hmm. To write stories that are so authentic. Yes. It's just mesmerizing that 
moving forward, we'll have more books. Hopefully by this author. <laughs> well, but, and others too. And, and as I'm saying, others yeah. too to it, to reflect you the want entire to talk queer about, community. Exactly. You want to talk about opening the door and holding it open. That's exactly what they're doing. They're, they're, come on, everybody else. The, like, there's more room. There's more room. There's more stories. Because as as we've talked about before, even though you can describe each of us with the same, you know identities very different lived experiences so just chef's kiss beautiful wonderful amazing book if you haven't read it do so please go do it right now audiobook read an actual book buy it from a independent bookstore check it out at the library a pro tip go look in the adult fiction section and then (laughs) glare at your librarian i think so um Going back to that, I, you know, I've been thinking about how I'm going to resolve my conflict about that situation. And yeah. I need to calm down. Yes. I need to take Taylor Swift's advice. Yes. And be rational. And then I want to go back when I return it and say, hey, I'm curious or I'm wondering why this book was not in the young adult section. Yes. And be that person. What are they going to do? Like, I'm a tax taxpayer i'm a citizen like i have a question and i want this answered now and um are you gonna record it i don't know but i am curious how many other queer books because again Mm -hmm. i found two two that i just happened to be looking for two out of two Mm -hmm. happened to be looking for wanted to reread Mm -hmm. and um but yeah, I, do, I think I, I have to do something about it because it's yeah. just, I, I every time I think about it, I get so flustered and so upset. But I, uh, back to the amazing book. Yes. Um, not only do I give it five out of five rainbows, Ooh. I'm going to give it five out of five glittering rainbows. Ooh. And oh. you know how much the queers love their glitter. Yeah. It's, it's excessive and everywhere all the time. Um, I also want to give it five out of five rainbows and... Five out of five trans flags and five oh, out yeah. of five um, non-binary flags, all the flags. Five out of all the fives of all the uh, uh, gender identities and sexuality, like everything. We get, we get pan, asexual, like ever, all of all, all of it, it. all of in it in a blender, perfect score mm-hmm. with glitter though. With glitter, okay, yeah, just so it sticks to everything and never goes away. You can ban it all, you know, ban different books. We won't stop. Can't stop. Write more. Put them everywhere. All the gay. All the time. All the trans. All the time. Like everywhere. We can you even queer it? Out. Like just... I, I don't think we can. I don't think we can. But we're going to. We must. For future generations. And us right now too. <laughs> um, amazing book. Our bonus book for May. Yes. Will be... All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson, which we mentioned earlier. If you want to get a jump start on June, we will go ahead and announce both of those now. Exciting. I'm so excited. June is hard because it's Pride Month. So I wanted something that was yeah. kind of historical fiction. Yeah. But also something that celebrates us. So um, we were doing Like a Love Story. Okay. And Love is Love, the graphic novel anthology. Yes. Which... The proceeds to that go to the victims' families of the Orlando shooting. Pulse shooting. Pulse yeah. shooting. So um, that's that's a good one to actually go and buy. And as we mentioned earlier, check your in- local independent bookstore. Absolutely. <clears throat> or see if they can order it. Most of the time they yeah, can. Yeah, a lot of times mm-hmm. they'll, they'll order it. Actually, and sometimes it's even faster. Yes, yeah, sometimes. Um, in fact, or cheaper. Yeah, I cheaper found than sometimes. Him. As we wrap it up. Just wanted to remind all of y'all out there, check us out on social media. Again, Facebook is All Queer Here Pod, and Instagram and Twitter are both at All Queer Here Pod. And uh, of course, you can email us your thoughts and questions. Love and letters. Lo- what? No, well, no, 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 no. Okay, love you can notes. email me a love letter. <laughs> but we want our listeners to love themselves. Mm-hmm. And if you want to email us, all queer here pod at gmail.com. And until next time, we're all queer here. Absolutely. But wait! Whoa, whoa, whoa! 
let's stop the music. We have an update. An update. An update. All right, folks. So we have a late breaking update that I'm going to edit back into the end of the episode. So like magic, you won't even know that. But this is a late breaking update. Anna, what do you have for us? Well, we talked about at the beginning of this episode that the book was not in the YA section, Mm -hmm. even though it was suggested for grades 9 through 12, and Mm -hmm. ages 14 and up. And then I found it in the adult fiction section, having Mm -hmm. remembered what I learned in library science school, Mm -hmm. and that it was self-censorship on the librarian's part and i waited yes. a couple weeks to go back because I, I was very upset remember yes I, I called you and told you i was upset. i was also upset <laughs> yes. um because you hear about things and you think well it doesn't touch my town or it doesn't touch my city and then when it does i think you just get even more riled up mm-hmm. so i took a couple weeks to calm down and to figure out like did i want to go in there angry did i want to go in there and like be fierce and bold or did i just want to go in and be like unassuming that they you know made a mistake you know So I chose the latter and I had a couple of books to return and I returned them outside and then I walked in and I had the Felix Ever After book in my hand and nobody was at the counter and I walked up and I said, hi, I'm here to return this book. So it would come off my account. And um, I said, I I just wanted to let you know that I think it's in the wrong section. And she kind of made this like confused face. I was like, what? And I said, yeah, it was in the adult fiction section, but it's a YA book. And she was like, oh, and kind of like looked very confused. Mm. And um, I said, do I need to fill out a form or anything? Because sometimes, you know, when you make a complaint or whatever, you have to fill out a form. She's like, no. I said, okay, well, thanks. And then I, I mean, she just looked totally baffled. Like she was going to figure it out. And she was younger, so maybe she's more on the progressive side. I know maybe. it's terrible to think, but. Hold the fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I kind of figured I'd give it a few weeks and then I would go check it out again. To see. Not, not check the book out, but like no, check out the No, look for the book. Yeah, yeah, look for the book and see and then be like, hey, I noticed this was in the adult fiction section. I came in two weeks ago and specifically said this was in the wrong section. Can I talk to someone about it? So there might be another update at some point, but okay, I was, it was kind of anticlimactic. It like took less than a few, you know, But like you did the seconds. first step. It was the you first step. You assumed yeah. positive intent. I did, and I think that made it better. Which so is, if I went which in, is I more than say, what we're usually given, right? So I could have gone in and said, "I'm upset about this being in the wrong section," but instead, I was instead I said, "You know, I think this was, I think this was put in the wrong section, or I think this was misplaced." I can't remember what I said, but I said yeah. something to that effect of, "I think this is in the wrong section because I found it in adult fiction." But it's a YA book. And then she looked really confused. So either she's new and didn't know about that practice. Or maybe it was a rogue librarian who made the decision. But there's Mm. nothing in that book that suggests it should be an adult book. Agreed. I like the idea of a rogue librarian. (laughs) I think that's you. Okay? So if it doesn't shake out our way, you, the rogue librarian. Like citizen Sneaking into libraries and reshelving the books in the appropriate spot. Oh, yeah, I guess. Well, if it happened again and I found it in a couple weeks, because they should hold the book because they need to put the new label on and then put it in the right place. Because they put... One would hope. Because it says F for fiction and the YA books say YA. And One so, would hope. Um, my hope is that I go back in a couple weeks and it's in the right section. But if it's not, then I go back and say, hey, I, I had returned this book a couple weeks ago and I noticed when I checked it out it was in the wrong section now I am just happened to see it on the adult fiction section. You know, I'm just wondering if I could talk to some. So that's going to be yeah. the next step is like inviting the conversation. Escalate. Yeah, escalate it, but like in a concerned citizen way. Yes. Because again, if the books aren't on the YA shelf, kids don't necessarily, I know I didn't when I was a kid, you don't search for a book and then go find it. You just look at the shelves and you just pick books up and see what they're about. Like that's yeah. very often what you do when you browse Quite the shelves. frequently, yeah. So, um... And yeah, if it becomes it comes to a point where they leave it in adult fiction, then I'll just keep reshelving it myself. Rogue librarian rogue, strikes again. Rogue librarian citizen to the rescue. So, <laughs> but I think it, you know at some point it becomes you know because there was another book that we'll feature later on that had the same yes. thing. If this is a, a problem in our city, yes, and a problem in other we shall cities, raise heck. You should, as a concerned citizen, be like. The young adults can't find these books because they're being shelved in adult fiction, and adults are not necessarily their target audience. Yeah. I mean, I'm an adult. I love the book. But yes. I, I don't believe I'm its target audience. 
So I just, you know, those books should be placed in the appropriate places. And I'm, yeah, I so that the, the that. readers that can be most impacted can find them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, I hope that we don't get to fully experience the Rogue Librarian. I hope that they take your comment to heart and they Absolutely, fix the yeah. mistake. Yeah, and then it says it's fine and I can just do that with other books, you know? And maybe I'll just start browsing the adult fiction yeah, section more like, closely whoops, and be like, oh, whoops, that's whoops, YA. Whoops. That, oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. Just like put them all <laughs> in your cart. I don't think they have shopping carts, but maybe they should. Just bring your own. Bring, bring my own, yeah. Yeah, bring your own like, from home. Hey, y'all. I'll, I'll get your you one. resident queer citizen trying to fix book mistakes. Also, who's making these mistakes? Can I have a chat with him or her? Are they? Yeah. Oh, oh. oh. I highly doubt a they is making that mistake. But you'd be surprised because really? sometimes, think? sometimes people who identify within that community are afraid that if they don't put them higher up, like for, for adult fiction, that a parent will get mad and the book will be removed. And that's part of the Okay, I can understand that too. Is they'd rather it be in the library to some degree. Period versus not at versus all. Versus not at all. And so that, I mean, it's hard choosing books for a community that you're a part of when it, you know, becomes controversial. Like an identity should not be controversial. But Agreed. At same, but at the same time, but that's why we have professional reviews. We have coworkers to discuss books with. We don't just choose books on a whim. There's a reason for a book. A lot of times patrons are asking for specific books about X, Y, and Z. And so you're up on what's popular. You're up on what people want to read. Mm -hmm. And so I think with this situation, it could be, there could be a lot going on. And maybe we, you know, obviously I don't know. Maybe we're not privy to the behind the scenes. Not privy to that, but I definitely think it's a... It's, it's a follow-up it's, it's situation. A it's a conversation worth having. It's a conversation. And like I said, I feel like two weeks is a good amount of time for them to like, oh, maybe someone's on vacation. Maybe they have to talk to so-and-so. Maybe they have to blah, blah, blah. Maybe they have to go back and look at the records. Yeah. And why it was classified as adult fiction because they might have made a note in the system. Yeah, could Maybe be. it was in Young Adult and it got a complaint and so they bumped it up. I know, it just, I think moving it up as a way to keep it. As a it, compromise to keep it in the library. But now if there's someone yeah. saying, hey, I noticed this is, you know, then we've, you know, yeah, I, move I don't it know. Back maybe. Well, you know what? I'm curious because um, I know we have listeners all over the place and, and we're, we're excited about that. But I'm curious, listeners out there, are you seeing this in your local library? Are yeah. you seeing this in bookstores, like local bookstores? Are you seeing this form of self censorship out there where you're picking up? books to read well i was curious because you know our next book is all boys aren't blue oh and i was so nervous sad. but that book was just in biography because it's it's a mem- it's a memoir manifesto as it's um i love i love that billy. Front, but yeah. it is technically a biography so that was just in biography there was no you know problem with that it's an interesting take since this book was fiction and there's a ya fiction and an adult fiction I, it's not an adult you know biography a, and adult, a young adult biography. and young adult biography not yeah. not commonly but you know no. your library could be different depending on yeah, but I mean, I'm I'm serious, listeners. Like, hit us up on our social media yeah. at All Queer Here Pod. If you're seeing the same type of thing, um, maybe somebody out there has uh, has already fought this battle. Maybe yeah, you can Phoenix tell us. After, yeah. yeah, tell us how it worked out for you. Did it go our way? Did it not? I Were love advice. I think I'm, I'm nervous because I am a fellow librarian, so mm-hmm. I feel like you kind of come at it from a different way. But I tried to really disconnect from that identity and go in as like i read this book yeah as a citizen i yeah. was looking for it as a citizen it bothered me because i couldn't find it i almost walked away mm-hmm. don't want your patrons to leave when when the content they want is there but they can't find it yeah End absolutely story. and then the the underlying concept of transphobia was at play and i don't want I, that to be a thing. i certainly hope that's not the case yeah just maybe it was a mistake let's just hope that Well, we'll follow up. We'll follow up. Appreciate it. All right. Well, until next time. We're all queer here. Absolutely. Absolutely.